Saturday of the 30th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I ask then, has God rejected his people? Of course not. For I too am a child of Israel, a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says about Elijah? how he pleads with God against Israel? Hence I ask, did they stumble so as to fall? Of course not. But through their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make them jealous. Now if their transgression is enrichment for the world, and if their diminished number is enrichment for the Gentiles, how much more their full number? I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you will not become wise in your own estimation. A hardening has come upon Israel in part until the full number of the Gentiles comes in, and thus all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away godlessness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. In respect to the gospel, they are enemies on your account. But in respect to election, they are beloved because of the patriarch, for the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, The Lord will not abandon his people. Bless the man whom you instruct, O Lord, whom by your law you teach, giving him rest from evil days. The Lord will not abandon his people. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor abandon his inheritance. But judgment shall again be with justice, and all the upright of heart shall follow it. The Lord will not abandon his people. Were not the Lord my help? My soul would soon dwell in the silent grave. When I say, my foot is slipping, your mercy, O Lord, sustains me. The Lord will not abandon his people. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, Give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, When you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from the letter to the Romans, chapter 11. Verses 1 to 2, 11 to 12, and 25 to 29. Paul speaks about the fact that he is Jewish, that he's from the tribe of Benjamin, and he, of course, would never try to hurt his own people. Nevertheless, he recognizes that for a time they've been alienated from God. Why? Because they rejected the Messiah whom Yahweh had sent to save Israel. Nevertheless, God can use even this rejection for the good, because this has given the Gentiles the opportunity to join into the covenant. They were once aliens, they were excluded, but now in a sense, the rejection by the Jews has given them an opening. They can now be one with God. That doesn't mean that the Jews are rejected forever, because once the pagans have converted, 
the Jews will become jealous and they'll want to convert too. This is all part of God's mysterious plan. First the Jews, then the Gentiles, and then the Jews once again. What Paul is trying to say is that God can use even our rejection, our sinfulness, to bring about good in this world. How could that be true? Well, if our sinfulness teaches us humility, if our sinfulness helps us to recognize how others are tempted and how easy it is for them to fall because it was easy for us to fall, then it teaches us not to be judgmental of others, to reach out to others who are in need of our strength, in need of our healing. If that happens, then in a sense we've transformed a sinful situation into a blessing. What can we say about Paul's attitude towards the Jews? He certainly suffered from what they did to him. And it seems to have broken his heart that they would have rejected him because he wants them to be saved. Nevertheless, he trusts that God can do things that he couldn't. That God would bring about a tremendous act of salvation through their rejection of Jesus. The Gospel is from Luke 14, 1 and 7 to 11. Jesus goes to the house of a Pharisee on the Sabbath, and they watch him closely, so he tells them a parable. He says that when you are invited to somebody's house, don't take the place of honor, go to the most humble place. Then it's possible they'll invite you to a higher place, you'll be greatly honored. If you go to the higher place, it's very possible somebody more important will show up, and you'll have to go to a lower place and you'll be humiliated. In other words, we should act humbly. We should not consider ourselves the most important person in the world. We should recognize others as needing our service, as possibly being greater saints than we are in God's eyes. If we live in humility, then we won't have to worry about being brought down from our high horse. If, however, we live with arrogance, with pride, then we will fall, not because God wants it, but because we're living in a false world, a world filled with illusions that are just not true. How do we humble ourselves? By recognizing what we are in the eyes of God. Not humiliating ourselves, but recognizing that the good that we have, the good that we do, is a gift from God, and therefore we're filled with a sense of tremendous gratitude. And recognizing that other people are important in God's eyes as well. Jesus died for them. Therefore, we should treat them with that same love that Jesus has shown them by being willing to die for them. And may God bless us.